Do you want to securely remotely access your Linux server? There's multiple ways to do this. Stay tuned to find out how. The More You Know, Tech Edition, brought to you in part by Blackburn and Tech. Okay, so I want to access this server remotely. One of the ways we can do this is using SSH. And this is a very common way. It's a way to, it's known as a secure shell. It's a way to access the server through like a terminal interface. So we need to install a service in order to do that. So in order to do this, we are going to use the terminal and, but I'll give you all the commands. So it's not that big of a deal. We'll just walk through this together. So go ahead and click on it, click on terminal should bring this up. This is your uh, terminal interface. And what we're gonna do, install open SSH server. So sudo apt install open SSH dash server. And it'll ask you for your admin password. And it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna do this? Yep, sure. So now it's going through and installing the open SSH server. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure our service is set to start when we're ready for it to start. sudo system control enable SSH. So what this is doing is whenever I start it, I want it to make sure it's on. And I want to start it right now. So I will go ahead and back that up and type run SSH. My apologies, I typed the wrong command. I gotta love it when that happens. So, start SSH, it's not run. So we wanna start the service now. It wasn't it, it wasn't run. It was sometimes, you know, when you're thinking something, it just doesn't go as planned. So we started the SSH service. Now we can try and get to this. So if I wanna see what the IP address is, I can do it in the, in the GUI, but I can also do it right here by typing IP ADDR. And then let me zoom in for. So this is my loopback, this 172. So that means that this is the adapter that's talking to itself on. But it, this 192.168.40.101, this is my real network adapter. So I can come over to a, a, a terminal emulator such as Putty and access this and check this out. 192.168.40.101. Port 22 and click open and see it. it's given to us this, this warning saying, Hey, we don't know who this is. Well, I know who it is, so I, I trust it. And here's where I can log in and now I am, I have an SSH connection to this box right here. So whatever I do in this command window, we'll do it on this, we'll do it for this server. So you might be saying, okay, Brian, that works great if I needed to do something from the command line, but most of the time I am not in the command line. I want to be able to share my desktop. Well, we have remote desktop protocol, which is known as RDP. Commonly, you'll see this in Windows environments, but you can also do it in a Linux environment. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So go ahead and come up here. Click on the settings icon. Scroll down to system and then it'll be a remote desktop right here. It used to be previously also for like VNC and some of those other settings, it used to be under sharing, but they have moved over here under this tab now. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And now you can see there's a couple options we have. We can do it a desktop sharing so we can share our desktop and we both can be on it at the same time or remote desktop. So sharing the existing desktop with others and it will use the same screen resolution, or you can have remote logon. I'm gonna do remote logon and I'll click unlock because it's gonna require my administrative account. And here's where I wanna turn this on. I want to go ahead and allow it. And then port 3389, which is the RDP port. And then what username and passwords for login details. So we're gonna go ahead and just put one in and we're gonna say test and my password. Obviously you would set something a lot more secure than this, T-E-S-T. -E so I'm gonna set it as test and test can log in. And so now I'm gonna try and test this out with the test account that I just created right here. 
So you guys can see that I'm not lying. I just set my password to test and test. So I'm going to try and log in through Microsoft on this. 192.168.40.101 was the IP address. And it's going to ask me for my account information. Test. Test. Then there's my certificate warning. Okay, fine. So now it's going to ask me, okay, now that you've logged in to the port itself, we want you to actually log in as a user. So I'm going to log on as my admin admin. And then it gives me a warning here. Remote login is not possible because your local session is already running when you're logged in. So now I can technically, so I'm going to click cancel on that, but I'm going to come back over to my that virtual machine itself, and I'm going to log out from here because it's saying that I can't log in because I'm already logged in. So I'm going to come over here and just click log out. That's fine. And this should take me back to the login screen. So this is essentially the same as looking at it from the computer monitor, but I'm going to go back in and try and log back in. through remote desktop now. All right, and as you can see, it logged right back in through the remote desktop. This is essentially the same way that you would do it like on a Windows computer where you're only allowed to have one user logged in at a time. If you do want multiple options, you can install like XRDP and set up more sessions and more advanced features. But this is a great way of, hey, I have a Linux box. I need to use my Windows box to remotely access it. Or there's multiple reasons to use RDP, but this one right here is a pretty straightforward process. Okay, so I did speed up that last little bit because I was going to try and install the VNC server, but I was having all sorts of issues with it. And I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong or if it's just the platform doesn't support it anymore. It's definitely, it's not as commonly used. And I think that's probably why I was struggling with it. But ultimately being able to remote desktop into a Linux box is definitely helpful any way you look at it. There is another section in there, like I mentioned when you was on the remote desktop where you can also set it up so you, if you wanted to share your screen, but yet you didn't want to actually give them control of it, you can do that too. Just remember that one uses 3390 versus 3389. Different port, but it will be on there and you can also change it if that port's in used on your box somewhere else. Well, I hope this has been informative and thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for your time. And if you wouldn't mind, drop a comment, suggestions, like, and subscribe. Definitely helps the channel. Thank you.